Hi, I'm Sam Hawley, coming to you from the lands of the Gadigal people. This is ABC News Daily. Since the FBI seized boxes of classified documents from Donald Trump's home, we've been learning a lot more about what they contained. There are even reports the former president had taken details of a foreign government's nuclear capabilities, a move that could see him face espionage charges. Today, a former FBI investigator on why even if Donald Trump is found guilty and jailed, he could still run for president again and probably will. My name is Asha Rangappa. I am currently an assistant dean and senior lecturer at the Yale Jackson School of Global Affairs, and I'm a former FBI agent who specialized in counterintelligence investigations. Asha, I want to touch first on a midterm election rally that was held by Donald Trump really recently in Pennsylvania. Well, thank you very much, and hello, Pennsylvania. Hello. It's important because it's the first rally he attended since the FBI raided his home. And just a few weeks ago, you saw it, when we witnessed one of the most shocking abuses of power by any administration in American history. The shameful raid and break-in of my home, Mar-a-Lago, was a travesty. And the language that he was using against the FBI was extraordinary. It is extraordinary language, but it's not new, really. This is rhetoric which he has had since he took office as president in 2016. Remember then he was under investigation as a part of the FBI looking into Russian election interference in the 2016 election. And at the time, he was already calling it a witch hunt. He was accusing the FBI of being biased and politically motivated. You know, he's done, he has done a very successful job of sort of painting the FBI as this lawless, rogue agency. The FBI and the Justice Department have become vicious monsters controlled by radical left scoundrels, lawyers, and the media who tell them what to do, you people right there, and when to do it. And since the FBI did seize those documents from his home, he's really stepped up that sort of language on social media. And we have seen protests, haven't we? People coming out uh, to the FBI headquarters, for instance, in Chelsea, in Phoenix. We are sick and we're tired of this tyrannical government called the Biden regime. Yes, and we know, for example, that just a day or two after the FBI executed the search warrant, the FBI Cincinnati office was actually attacked by an individual. Uh, and he raised the firearm toward law enforcement. That was around 342. A man was killed after firing a nail gun at an FBI field officer in Cincinnati and brandishing an assault rifle last Thursday after apparently posting about the attack on Donald Trump's social media platform. It's definitely put FBI agents in harm's way. Well, let's talk now about these documents that were seized from his Mar-a-Lago mansion, from Donald Trump's home. There was an array of classified documents, we know that, but do we know any more now about these documents a month since these boxes of classified material were seized? We do actually know a lot more. And for starters, I just want to point out that while we're focused on the classified documents, it's important to remember that Trump, I think at this point, had more than 10,000 government records generally in his possession, which is itself illegal. So among all of those records are classified documents. So the classified documents are a subset of the illegally possessed documents. We got a much more detailed breakdown of the kinds of classified documents, not in substance, but in terms of their classification. Many that were at the top secret SCI level, which means that these were uh, documents that were required to be kept in secret compartmentalized facilities. Uh, these are basically very, very tightly controlled 
areas. You can't take cell phones into them. You can't remove documents from them, as well as many folders that that had classification markings on them, which were empty. And so this has raised a lot of questions. And I saw in the the Washington Post in the last few days a suggestion that some of the documents were about the nuclear capabilities of another country, which is pretty incredible. Yes, this is why one of the crimes that Trump is being investigated for that we learned from the search warrant is something in the United States called the Espionage Act. And the Espionage Act has several different prohibitions But among them is illegally possessing national defense information, which the person who owns it has reason to believe could injure the United States if it is disclosed or could benefit a foreign government. And a third country's nuclear capabilities is something that could certainly benefit a foreign government. Mm, So really serious charges. What other charges could Donald Trump face after this investigation? So as I mentioned, because many of these are, the vast majority of these are just government documents generally, there's another statute which criminalizes the illegal removal, concealment, and mutilation of government records. And we know from one of the Department of Justice's filings that at least some of these government records were torn, for example, and they were concealed. And this is the key part that relates to the third charge, and I think the most important one that he could be facing, which is obstruction of justice. The timeline tells us that the National Archives engaged in a six-month back and forth to try to get these documents back directly from Donald Trump. So the fact that the search Uh, pursuant to the search warrant, recovered so many classified documents really is instrumental in showing that Trump was trying to obstruct justice. There's really no way for him to get around the facts on that particular aspect of what's unfolded so far. Mm. I want to look now at what comes next because this is really legally tricky, isn't it? I would say more than legally tricky, it's sort of legally crazy Uh because basically what we're seeing are a lot of legal moves that have never been done before. There's been another development in the wash-up of the FBI's search of Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago home. The former president is now suing the US government over the search in an attempt to temporarily stop the Bureau reading seized materials until a court can review the document. The first one was an attempt by Trump's lawyers to basically circumvent the criminal process by filing a civil suit in front of a judge who they thought would be sympathetic to them. And she has been. I mean, nobody does this. Like, normally, if you are the subject of a search and you think that there's something illegal about it, well, when the government tries to use that evidence against you, you can do what's called a motion to suppress. But he's tried to circumvent this. And I think at first it it was so bizarre that there was some thought that this judge was going to throw this out. She not only didn't throw it out, she entertained it. And then she really gave Trump everything he wanted. She appointed what's called a special master. And a special master is someone who essentially is appointed by the court to go through all of the seized material to see whether there are any privileged documents in there. Normally this is done if, for example, the FBI does a search warrant on an attorney and they recover a ton of documents and many of those documents could be covered by attorney-client privilege and not evidentiary. The FBI has what's called a filter team, which has its purpose to do this, which means it's a separate team that first sifts through everything before the team that actually looks at it to build the case can access it. But Trump wanted a third party to do this, and the court granted this. In the process of doing that, what she's effectively done is halt the investigation. And this is a judge appointed by Trump. And I assume Trump would be quite pleased by this special master being appointed to investigate. 
Oh, yes. I think that Trump is very happy with the special master. And yes, she was appointed by Trump uh, because, you know, Trump's tactic has always been to delay. If all else fails, just delay, to kick the can down the road. And so this does that at the very least. And at best, it may derail this whole investigation. It seems like Trump thinks that these documents are going to come back to him. But as I mentioned before, these are all stolen documents, which the judge didn't seem to really grasp. So it's just not clear what's going to happen. But right now, for Trump at least, he's gotten pretty much what he wanted. And I think the Department of Justice is really going to have to navigate a very weird legal situation. So let's look now at what comes next for Donald Trump, because you mentioned, of course, that he could face serious charges in relation to retaining those top secret classified documents. But he's also under investigation over those January 6 riots, isn't he? So he's pretty unrepentant about those riots. And on the US channel Newsmax, he even said that he'd look at pardoning those arrested if he became president again. It's a disgrace what they've done to them. What they've done to these people, it's disgraceful. And and I will tell you, I will look very, very favorably about about full pardons. So I guess the question is, is there a possibility he could become president again? I think there's absolutely a possibility he could be elected president again. And I, I hope this doesn't scare your listeners <laughs> in Australia. But here's the here's the deal. Even if he's indicted and even if he's convicted, that actually doesn't stop him from running for president again. Mm. There's no prohibition in the Constitution from a convicted felon, even potentially one sitting in jail, from being president. The minim- the requirements are minimal. You have to be 35 years old. You have to have been a natural-born citizen and lived in the United States uh, for 14 years. So... You know, I think that it is a very real possibility. And I think part of America really believes that President Trump has been wronged. In fact, they think he's still the president. He thinks he's still the president. Asha Rangalpa is an assistant dean and senior lecturer at the Yale University's Jackson School of Global Affairs and a former special agent in the New York division of the FBI. There is speculation Donald Trump could announce he'll be running for the presidency as early as this month. This episode was produced by Flint Duxfield, Sydney Peed, Chris Dengate and Sam Dunn, who also did the mix. Our supervising producer is Stephen Smiley. I'm Sam Hawley. ABC News Daily will be back again tomorrow. You can find all our episodes of the podcast on the ABC Listen app. To get in touch with the team, email us on ABC News Daily, abc.net.au. Thanks for listening. Subscribe to listen to more free podcasts or download the ABC Listen app and stream ad-free.